Last fall, I finally jumped in the project that I had in mind for a very long time. Go to the adventure in northern Quebec. Yes, I know. As a Canadian, I already live in a Nordic country. But did you know that 90% of the Canadian population live within 100 miles of the US border? So it's not for nothing that I wanted to climb some parallels to see with my own eyes all these beautiful isolated regions. When I first thought of the north, all I expected was to see lifeless landscape. Well, I was wrong, because I was about, just like you, to discover one of the most beautiful regions in the world. My name is Pascal Marquis, and I'm pleased to present you my latest adventure in northern Quebec. So, how do you go in northern Quebec? For sure, you can grab a flight. Just take a look at Google Flights, I select the departure airport, you for Montréal Trudeau, and I will look for another airport completely in northern Quebec. Let's go for Ivujivik. Perfect, there's a flight. Let's buy a ticket. $4,306? Okay, <laughs> we'll try another destination. Why not Kangjigjwak? Kangjigjwak. Well, it's even more expensive. Obviously, it's four times more expensive to go to the very north of my own province than to literally fly to the other side of the globe, to Japan. It seems that it's what happens when you want to go and venture to places where no one else want to go. It doesn't matter. I still have my good old Jetta that won't leave for a road trip with me. So, let's go to Google Maps, and we'll create a route to Ivujivik. Oops. Well, it seems that there is no road going there. Okay, that's fine. The objective will simply be to go as far in north as the road can take me. And this place is Kanyapisco. And what's in Kanyapisco? Other than hunting camp, absolutely nothing. It's probably the deepest dead end in the world. So before going there, I made an itinerary with lots of beautiful things to visit. A route from my city to Radisson. On a European scale, it's about the same as from Rome to Berlin. On the way, I started with Les Laurentides with its magnificent lakes and mountains. I spent the first two days at Mont Tremblant National Park. I had as much fun to see the beautiful fall color on the day as the stars at night. I then crossed Les Outaouais in the Vérandry National Park up to Abitibi. I stopped in Val d'Or and realized that this city was way much bigger than I expected. And you can't stop in the Gold Valley without seeing at least one gold mine. It's gigantic. No kidding, if you want to feel very, very small, Go and see an open pit mine. It works very well. While being in the area, I stopped in Igebel National Park. I had never heard of this name before. I only decided to go because I noticed it on the map and it is by far the most beautiful national park I have visited in Quebec. How to say? As you can see, the landscapes are delectable. 
But what makes the charm of the park is that you begin to feel the northern atmosphere. The calm, the solitude, the tranquility, and the silence. The North is not only a visual experience, it's above all a hearing experience. Because I never visited a region of the world this quiet. I found myself several times in places so noiseless that all I heard, apart maybe that fish jumping in the middle of the lake, or that dragonfly a few meters away, the only other thing I could have heard was my heart. And this immersion with silence began in this park, and I still had a lot of parallels to climb. The next step was to cross La Route de la Beijing, also called the Billy Diamond Road in memory of Billy Diamond, chief of the Cree nation of Waskaganish. This isolated road stretched on 620 kilometers between Matagami and Radisson. But what's an isolated road? It's a road where you hardly find anything. Picnic table here and there, a huge shoulder in which we sometimes see park a truck, a single gas station in the middle of it, and above all, no cellular network. In the peak hours of the busiest areas, and busiest is a very big word, I probably saw a maximum of 20 vehicles per hour. Sometime, I was just alone for hours. Do you know a lot of roads where the allow limit is 100 km per hour and you can take the time to install your camera in the middle of the road to make a shot like this one? No kidding, it was safe. It was so quiet that when a car arrived, I could hear it two to three minutes before it passed, if not more. I stayed there for almost an hour and I would say that only three passed. Described like that, it might seem like a crazy idea to go and venture on this 620 km road. 620 km is the same distance as between Paris and Bern taking the longest route recommended by Google Maps. I expected the drive to be as long and boring as the outline of Lake Superior in Ontario, but I can tell you today that it is by far the most beautiful road I ever drive by car. I began that route by hiking the mountain very close to Matagami and enjoy the sunset on top before spending the night near this river where I could watch the sunrise through the fog. I then thought to make the road to Radisson on the very same day, but I rather took the time to stop at each attraction above the road to observe the horizon. At this one I could throw some rock into the lake, at the next one I could do some trekking in the woods. Further on, I could walk along the river. And another one, it was to see the rapids. That was really amazing. Oh, a black bear. They're so cute. At night, I could still see the stars. And I even missed my first northern light that night. Yeah, I know, it's bad. I look at it few times during the night and I never saw it. But I promised myself to not miss the next one because the next day I was going to Radisson, the northernmost village you can go by road in the province. It is also the northernmost French-speaking community in Quebec, America, and even the world. There is about 400 peoples that live in Radisson, of which only half of them live there full-time. The others are workers who come and go every week. We quickly make the tour of the village which include an inn, a motel, a post office, a school, a convenience store, a restaurant and a grocery store, which also serve as a gas station. But be careful, it's closed on Monday. And prepare your wallet if you want to buy food or refuel. The small bottle of Pepsi is $4.39, the peanut butter kilo is 11 dollars 59 
and beware. The filet mignon is on discount this week at $70.29 per kilo for the modest sum of $124.98 for this beautiful piece of meat. I don't believe they take advantage of their monopoly. It seems to be the logical price of isolation. And yes, I think that when your closest competitor is more than 620 kilometers away, you can call it a monopoly. Radisson is also the ideal place to observe these beautiful foxes. They're all over the place and they are really cute. Some even told me that they come and eat in your hand. But this one was way too nervous for that. But why does this village in northern Quebec even exist? Although you may never have heard of Radisson, the people who work there play a vital role in the province. It is home to the most powerful power station in Canada and the largest underground hydroelectric power station in the world. From the outside, we can see its huge spillway with the giant staircase. You might think it's look big just like that, but you're wrong. It's colossal, huge, gigantic. Imagine, there is 10 steps. Each of them is 10 meters high and there is enough space to install two American football fields on each steps. These stairs were made to reduce the flow of water that there would be if the balls were to be opened one day to evacuate the water from the reservoir. Otherwise, it would make a kind of tsunami. The reservoir behind is 2,825 square kilometers wide. It's big enough to fit in five small countries like Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, San Marino, Monaco, the Vatican, and there would still be some room left. In short, it's a really impressive place. I was unfortunately not allowed to film inside, but I also have the chance to visit the Robert Bourassa power station, located 140 meters underground. It was really impressive, and I certainly did not expect to be able to go in the hearth of a turbine at work. Really, Radisson might be very far away, but it's worth a detour just for that. Moreover, the visit of the power station is free. And it was that evening that I had the chance to observe my very first northern light. It was not the biggest, and it didn't last long, but I'm so glad to have had that chance to enjoy this show. It was very well worth the few hours I waited in the cold of the night. It is truly a magnificent phenomenon to see these green lines dancing in the sky. It gives a whole depth to the sky that is normally not perceptible. The next day, I went completely to the west of the province at the foot of the Hudson Bay. Yep, I absolutely wanted to go there. And it worth the detour. It was simply beautiful. Finally, I'll stop telling you about that adventure for now. In the following weeks, I will be posting the vlogs of this unforgettable adventure. You can go see them by clicking on the card at the upper right corner of the video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. In the meantime, I'll leave you on a few more images. Because Northern Quebec is also a delight for the eyes. Alright, take care and I'll see you in another video. Salut!